Hey friends at Zion, blessed Tuesday to you. It's time for Bible Teaching Tuesday. We'll look ahead to the epistle reading that you'll hear read this Sunday. This is a very familiar one. If you've been to any weddings in your life, you've probably heard this read, but uh, maybe even in other contexts too. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Remember, Paul has been talking for the past several weeks about all the different spiritual gifts that are given to the body of Christ. Um, everybody gets a different gift, but they're all equally important for the functioning of the church. And then he moves into this section, sometimes called the love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13, where he says all of that is like a clanging gong or a resounding symbol. It's just noise in our ears if we don't exercise these spiritual gifts with love. And then he goes on and defines what love is. Um, through 16 characteristics, you can see them listed there on your screen, uh, he begins by two positive characteristics. He says love is patient, and love is kind, and then he talks uh, for the next uh, eight characteristics about things love is not, things love doesn't do. It doesn't envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. So those are things that love stays away from. And I think it's important for us to recognize that even though these are adjectives in the English translations, they're actually participles. They have a, a verbal root in the Greek. And that just means that love here is almost being personified. Um, just like a person would be patient or kind. Uh, love is not boasting. It's not, it's not arroganting, et cetera. So you kind of get the flavor of that. It's, a, it's an active living out of love. And so that 10th characteristic, it does not rejoice at wrong. And then the flip side of that shifts back to the positive, but it does rejoice with truth. Love loves the truth. Love is willing to seek the truth before it judges. Love doesn't rush to conclusions. It waits for the evidence to come forth so that then a rightful verdict uh, or judgment can be rendered on a situation. Uh, so then it finishes then here with uh, five more characteristics, positive characteristics of love. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and finally it never ends. And then, of course, this finishes with that uh, famous line, these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And some have said, the reason love is the greatest is because it continues on into eternity forever and ever. Someday our hope and our faith will become sight. Our hope will be realized. The things we hoped for in faith we'll see with our own eyes. And so the importance of hope and faith sort of diminish when all the promises that have been given to us in Jesus one day become reality. But love, love continues on. Now, uh, on Tuesday mornings, we also teach an Acts Bible study. And, and typically we look at the gospel reading, but this week I chose to take a look at this and so I'm stealing from some of the content I'm going to show them later so if you're an Acts Bible study attendee faithful and you're also a faithful daily devotion watcher I apologize for the redundancy but hey is uh is it ever too much to hear God's word again uh, lastly I just want to show you some kind of a connection here uh you've probably heard of uh, the fruit of the spirit in Galatians uh 5 22 and 23 uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, some scholars say that perhaps this isn't just a list of nine. Perhaps Paul is saying the fruit of the Spirit is love, and then the rest of the things actually kind of define what love is. And I think there's uh, something to this, because if you look, Paul defined love elsewhere. If we just looked in 1 Corinthians 13 and, and showed a bunch of characteristics of love, and if if that's what Paul's also doing in Galatians, look how similar these lists are. I just put some, they're not exact parallels, but uh, quite similar. So we said love, uh, joy. Well, didn't Paul say love rejoices in the truth? Love is peace, keeps no record of wrongs. Uh, by the way, that's, uh, that's, that's one of the translations from the NIV of uh, it is not arrogant. Uh, that's what it really means. It does not reckon or count up wrongs. Uh, patient, kind. Those were the first two characteristics in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, goodness, 
does not insist on its own way. Faithfulness believes and endures all things. Gentleness, say, not irritable. Self-control, rude, or does not behave uh, improperly, which is, is kind of the connotation of the Greek word that's used for rude there. Against such things, Paul says, there is no law. So here we have two places in Paul's letters where love is given some more definition. And we would do well as Christians to, to meditate on these characteristics uh, in our life each day. All right, well, that's it from me this week. Pastor Roland will be with you for Words of Wisdom Wednesday and Gospel Preview Thursday. Hey, we're glad that you who tune into these devotions find them helpful. Yeah, it's, it's a joy for us to do them knowing that there's people out there listening. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for this day. Help us to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit, those characteristics of love in our life today. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a good week.